Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Create Together. I'll be pack prospecting this mod pack for you, so let's dig in. Pack prospecting is where I show you a brief overview of what to expect in a mod pack, and Create Together is for Minecraft 116.5. Create Together is a lightweight mod pack that attempts to bridge the gap between vanilla and modded, focusing on a singular mod called Create while adding in some samples of some simpler mods to balance things and still not overwhelm the typical vanilla player too much. Let's go over some themes. This is definitely a vanilla plus pack. It does have some heavier mods in it, but they've been brought back to a very basic level. It does have a lot of options for building, and it also offers some low-tech or redstone-like contraptions that you can build yourself, making all sorts of crazy things. The style of this pack, it's very open. It, it is essentially your vanilla Minecraft. It is achievement focused if you want to follow that route, uh, but it is not required as it is an open style. But it also has some teaching elements in it. Now, it, it doesn't have a heavy teaching, but it does offer the pondering mechanic, which Create definitely has in mind for teaching people how to use this really strange and yet u very unique and fun mod. Let's go over the weight of this pack. This is actually a potato pack. It is designed with the lightweight user in mind. If you need to run something that is very lightweight and you want to play modded, this pack could probably do it for you. Now, keep in mind though, if you spam a whole lot of really heavy blocks that are doing all sorts of crazy block updates, you might end up lagging yourself out. But with all that in mind, it's still a really lightweight pack. It has a super fast load time, it does have server options, and it has a server mindset in this mod pack, so it's best to play with friends. The stability, as far as I've been able to tell, is really good. There's really not been any issues unless, of course, you've got people spamming a lot of blocks, but that's the same with vanilla as it is with anything in Minecraft. As for popularity of this mod pack, I'd say that it's fairly popular. I mean, at the moment of this video, it's on page 8 and has about 24,000 downloads. Uh, so it, it's it's up there, and it definitely has a mod pack dev of note. Uh, uh, that being the author of the Enigmatica series, so it's definitely got some some push behind it and some experience. Let's go over world gen. You do have some options when you're first setting up your world to choose some quark like options, changing the world a little bit, but not a lot. Uh, but it is very vanilla otherwise. It will have some new quark structures in there, which will make it a little bit more interesting to explore. Uh, and it does have some create mod ores in there, which really doesn't change too much. The difficulty of this pack is actually not in mobs or any kind of increased difficulty curve or anything. It, it's more or less just in the learning. Trying to understand how modded works or how some of the mods will work. And as mentioned before, thankfully Create does have the ponder mechanic. Let's talk about mobs. You definitely have your vanilla set. You have some vanilla plus ones in there with a few new animals and a few new creatures, uh, mostly just added by Quark. Let's talk dimensions. It's pretty basic here. You've got the overworld, the nether, and the end. They're all relatively unchanged, the nether and the end mostly so. Let's go over tools and armor progression. You've got your vanilla styles, and then you've got Paxels. That that definitely adds a little bit to it, but uh, it doesn't really change much else. Your your armor sets and your elytras and whatnot are all fairly the same vanilla style otherwise. And if you're not familiar with a Paxel, it's more or less three tools mixed together in one with kind of like an averaged, maybe slightly above average stat set. All right, let's go over building options. This pack is designed for building, or at least it has a lot of that in mind. It's very vanilla, but it does have a huge amount of variant blocks to choose from, especially since Create adds some really lovely textures. Adding in Quark brings in a whole bunch more in there. But as for tools, well, there's actually quite a few that you have at hand. One being a couple of the basic ones that Quark offers. Then you've got the building gadgets, which there is at least four different styles that you can choose from all of which do not require any kind of power source if you're a, a modded player and familiar with these tools. Uh, they have infinite power, so you can just use them at will. Then there's the construction wand, which is more or less just a dumbed down version and a much cheaper one than the building gadget style, uh, but it also has a few extra add-ons for it. 
Then there's the Cobblegen Randomizer mod. This adds in all sorts of interesting options for automating different mundane blocks, like limestone for instance, or scoria. You could easily create these the way that you normally would with basalt from the nether. There are ways that you can create generators for this, and you can harvest them with create in a much more organized manner. But this just gives you an example of how this really does allow you to build a lot without getting overpowered with like super heavy magical tools or anything. It just kind of gives you the building materials you really wanted and didn't have to grind for. So it's got a good focus on reducing grind in Minecraft. Now let's go over inventory options. So you of course have your vanilla chests as you normally would. You now have backpacks which have auto pickup features, filtering, and so on. Then there's also storage drawers which just allows you to place large quantities in single block spaces or uh, a few blocks and you can upgrade those with different options. And then this might blow a few people's minds uh, but refined storage is in here. Now it's not the refined storage that most people are familiar with. It gives you just a few blocks to start with and they all have infinite power so you don't need to worry about generating power for these. This just gives you a simple storage and crafting technique, but no way of actually using refined storage to store things. You have to use your drawers, backpacks, vanilla chests, and so on in order to, well, just have access to these. I've got a small setup here that kind of gives an example of how this works, or at least how it could look. Let's go over maps. It's very vanilla feeling, but uh, at some point you're going to notice that there is the FTB chunks mod in here and that will mark your death waypoint. It will toss up a beacon when you die. It will also uh, kind of give you an area map that you can uh, kind of click your safe area from and, and prevent things from, from injuring your landscape. So let's talk about anti-griefing. With, with FTB chunks, um, that pretty much takes care of a lot of things. There's also FTB teams, which allows you to set up teams of players so that you guys can uh, uh, like certain permissions can be granted for accessing areas that have been claimed by players. And the fact that you have some kind of mapping option, but it's not your typical mini-map or zeros stuff, kind of gives it a bit more of a vanilla feel, but also kind of introduces people to it. And it, it just makes it a little bit nicer. All right, let's go over mod overlap. Um, if there is any, it's mostly aesthetic and, and nothing really of note. I haven't noticed much of anything that's a problem in Mata Overlap. Special requirements? Not really, but if you are unfamiliar with what to do on here, there is some really nice options on the website, the CurseForge website that is, that you can click on and it'll take you to the wiki and it'll give you lots of helpful tips and such like that. There are no special resource packs or texture packs that I'm aware of. But uh, often people will try using Optifine in combination with Create, and, and, and it won't play well. Uh, that doesn't mean it won't work, but it just doesn't always work. So that's just something that isn't usually supported. What about if I die? What happens? The death mechanic. Well, it uses enigmatic graves, which are really, really nice. Actually, it's one of the best grave mods that I've known, uh, at least recently. It will glow while you're holding this item that you respawn with in your hand, which will show you where your grave is, but it'll be within about 80 blocks is the kind of range on that. And then thanks to FTB uh, chunks uh, and, and teams and such, you're going to also have a map marker, if you so desire, with a beacon showing you kind of where stuff is. So it definitely helps out, but all you need to do is just sneak on it or right-click it and all the items that were in your corpse or grave will go back to the spot where exactly where they were before. So it's really nice. It also makes it a lot more pleasing and less punishing uh, than it would be in vanilla. Things of note in this mod pack, well definitely the building gadgets. That just adds so much to this, especially if you're trying to build like large bases or huge rooms or uh, customize things, it, it's really going to make a big difference because you could even use it just to empty out big areas and destroy things. It, it's it's a game changer. The FTB mods, there's Ultimine in here, so you can just mine out all of one type of block using you know either your fist or the appropriate tool and so on. It definitely is a time saver, especially when you're playing in a modded setup. With chunks and teams in there, it offers a lot for team play as well as just playing on a server, which it definitely has that in mind. 
I've mentioned refined storage, it being dumbed down and really simple. I love it actually. This is all I've really wanted in a storage mod is something simple like this with some exterior options that you could plug into it. It, it makes it simple for those that really want to just get into a little bit of storage and they don't want the overpowered automation that a lot of these mods offer. Magic Feather. This one here, just by having this Magic Feather in your inventory while near a beacon, you get creative flight. So, well, you do have to have accomplished certain feats in order to get that far, but this will allow you a lot of control over p building things. It doesn't mean that you are in creative mode, you just get that creative flight option in a small area. Simple magnets. This is really nice. It offers you the option to automatically magnet things in that you've thrown on the ground, have dropped from mobs, or just you come across. It has a couple different sets. There are simple ones and more advanced ones that you can filter. Plus, it offers some options so that you can turn those off in areas because there's a lot of create contraptions that might have items flying around in the world that you don't want to pick up. And you can just place one of these things down and it'll stop that from happening. And of course there's an advanced one that you can filter too. Simply Backpacks offers that one backpack that is really nice. It has an automatic filtering system so if you don't want to automatically pick up certain things you can do that. The One Probe. This will help a lot of people to understand what a block is because vanilla players know pretty much every block if they're deciding to try and move into a modded atmosphere. But when they look at something, they're like, what in the heck is that? And then they find out that they can't mine it and the block is gone. Well, the one probe will tell you what it is in the tool that it most likely would be harvestable with. Cobble Gen Randomizer. This one here adds in all of those really awesome mundane stones or stone-like items to be able to be generated and automated as you desire and as you need. So is this pack unique? I'd have to say kind of. Um, it, it definitely is in a way but there's a lot of create vanilla plus style mod packs out there. So with that in mind, it, it kind of loses a little bit of uniqueness, but because of all the quality of life, the simplifying of a lot of the, the heavier mods that have been added in, it definitely gives it a really well-organized unique factor for that. So it is curtailed to a vanilla server experience. And I think that that's really important. Now, are there any things that I personally think this is missing or needs? I would have to say it's actually direction for new modded players. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with some of these mods that I've mentioned in here, then you're, you're not even going to know that they're there. You're going to just find out that some suddenly this button did something and what is going on. There's a bit of confusion on that and having a, a light questing mechanic in there to understand some of these things even if there's like no rewards just some kind of check marker or something like that with, with FTB mods in there I figure why not but adding in questing does add in a whole lot of extra options uh, uh, or at least can take up a lot of time so it's the only thing that's lacking but I don't think that it's mandatory I think that uh, those people that play this pack for a while will really end up kind of fleshing out what the mods are and what they do so that's about it. If you enjoyed this pack prospect into Create Together, please give a like, a comment, a sub even. And if you have any mod packs that you're interested in seeing for a pack prospect, please be sure to comment down below. Don't be afraid to click that notification bell. Come visit us on Twitch, help us spread the mischief, and I'll see you guys next time.